Hello everybody, welcome in the next four weeks Green Tech Live. It's my great pleasure to welcome again Ms. Natalia Arategui. Welcome Natalia, you're with us. Ah, uh, thank you, Jana. Thank you for the invitation today. Hello everyone. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for taking the time here in Switzerland. It's a national holiday. So this is how we celebrate with bamboo and we pretty much love the topic. So today it's going to be about edible bamboo shoots. Uh, I mean, those of you which eventually notice, we are also running shortly a course on that. So anybody interested in that, you definitely find more information on our Frogix LinkedIn page or on uh, frogix.com as always. Um, without further ado, I would just give a little bit of an intro on Natalia's background for those of you that uh, maybe did not see her so far, but we work uh, quite heavily with Natalia. And let me tell you a little bit more on, on her. So she's a forest engineer by education. She has a master in tropical forestry and management at uh, TU Dresden in Germany. And she has more than 15 years of experience working with bamboo in different uh, kinds of the value chain or different parts of the value chain, including taxonomy and also silviculture. She was trained in China, Colombia and Mexico. So those of you that are a little bit more fit uh, with bamboo know that it's it's the hot spots where, where the music is playing in this matter. She has also worked with research groups in Peru and Finland regarding ecology value chain of bamboo products. And uh, yeah, with this, I would welcome Natalia and uh, hand over the stage to you to shoot at us information uh, at, uh, uh, and about edible shoots and, you know, how to manage the harvest and, you know, all sorts of stuff. If you would have questions for those of you that are following the stream on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube or Facebook, uh, drop us a comment uh, in the in the comment section and we will come to that questions at the uh, final part of the of the talk today so with this natalia please thank you jana thank you very much uh, i prepared a very small presentation a couple of uh, of, of slides uh, let me try to make them yeah, it's about, uh, I prepared it um, actually also like in the context of our upcoming um, course, no, to invite you all. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, we already developed um, a course with uh, with my friend Mauricio, my friend and colleague Mauricio, I'm going to present you also after, in the one of the last slides and we did it in Spanish and it was a great success. We have like students from eight different countries. And I think it was it was quite they were quite happy about it. So, so um, first of all, uh, no, why? Uh, so, sorry, if I just maybe uh, can interrupt. So uh, for those of you that are also maybe uh, worried a little bit about the language, because we have wide diversity of people internationally on the languages. Uh, just you know, uh, share with us your language request. What is your preferred language of the course? Uh, we have a network of experts that we work with. As Natalia mentioned, Spanish is not a problem. English is the first language that we have the course in. And, you know, it's uh, it's tailorable, tailorable, whatever. It's the it's the name. So we can we have more languages to offer. So with this, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yes, and also uh, Mauricio speaks uh, perfect French. He speaks great uh, French. I don't speak French, but I think that we could <laughs> sort it out <laughs> with the subtitles. <laughs> Uh -huh. but, uh, so far, this course is in English, mm -hmm. and um, yes, and why? No, why? Why are we making some so, such a course in edible shoots? It's uh, in Europe at least. Is um, we realize that it's quite a new subject, even though there's a lot of uh, of consumption of bamboo shoots here. If you go to Asia markets or um, also like. I've seen them also in some, in, even in the big uh, supermarket chains, I've seen always bamboo shoots uh, being sold, you know, in, in like pickled or in, uh, sold with water. But why? No, first of all, there has been studies that um, show how, the, how bamboo shoots actually are a great complement in nutrition in our diets to the amount of proteins, amino acids, carbohydrates, minerals. Maybe the most important um, part of the nutrition that, or the diet that uh, bamboo shoots um, actually 
support are the amount of fiber that they have in in, in South America, especially in Peru. I come from Peru. Uh, the the diet is very is very low in fiber, which uh, also causes a lot of problems in the long term uh, health problems, especially in the intestines or in the metabolism, the um, digestive system. So yeah, it's a very, very it's a great source of fiber and also uh, it has a lot of potassium also, even more than bananas, which are the main, which are uh, considered one of the main sources of potassium in our diets and also magnesium. No? That has a lot to do with ner nervous system uh, and has more than even um, Example in some species, I think in Moso, it was studied that you have like 390 milligrams per 100 grams of magnesium versus 167 milligrams that wheat flour has. No, so yes, so it can uh, become a great complement in our diets, especially if we grow them in home in our home gardens. And um, as I said, in the home gardens uh, in Asia. Uh, like it becomes and it's part of 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 their diet of their culinary uh, culture, no. Mm. And they manage their plantations also for only for for shoots sometimes, no. So yes, it's also a very very important cultural uh, ceremony or or heritage for for many countries. And. Um, last but not least, in the in the world, there's a there's a big big uh, share of bamboo or shoots no in the markets. We are talking about a uh, two hundred million dollar uh, market uh, around the world no, with countries uh, uh, importing. Japan is one of the main countries that are, imp are importing bamboo shoots and. Second, uh, so the United States is a big uh, bamboo importer, and Germany, you know, uh, also. And exporting, of course, China is the is the king of bamboo exports in many in many aspects, not only bamboo shoots. But I think that in in each of our countries, especially well, at least in Latin America, or where we have a big a big. Um, uh, a uh, big population of Asian of Asian descent or Asian um, origins, we can uh, we can have good um, source or a good potential of selling fresh bamboo shoots, no? Um, because fresh bamboo shoots is, is they are really really uh, highly valued by these populations because at least completely different than having than having pickled uh, bamboo shoots or or kept in acid no normally they come um, bamboo shoots they come when you buy them in the store they come in acetic acid um, which is almost a, like a kind of a vinegar um, or ascorbic acid it's like some kinds of, of acids that are used for preser preserving foods but one of the things that are most valuable for me, at least uh, in bamboo shoots, is the capacity that they have of absorbing uh, fl flavors. No, that's why they they are so good when they are pickled, when they are fresh and then pickled because they take all the flavor of the of the other uh, of the other vegetables and the vinegar. However, when they are when they are preserved in this this uh, bean in these acids, then the flavor is completely changed and not as good no, as it, as it as it when when they're fresh. That's why they, uh, in Mexico or in Peru, every time that they know that we are eating bamboo fresh bamboo shoots, they always uh, start start uh, ordering no more all, all the existences that we have. Um, um, then, Natalia, uh, yes. may I? Uh, are you showing uh, the slides, or are we going through the presentation? Because uh, the presentation is not moving. So just it's in not case, moving. it's not moving. Maybe we can just now. We are yes. We see the flags. Uh, so with the countries. This this you saw this one the one with the with the 
the values, the nutritional values of bamboos? No, we did not see it. So the, we didn't the see anything. Oh no! Why? That's very. That's very weird. It was. It was on hold somehow. Dejar de compartir. Okay, let me. Let me try to. Let's be sure. Uh, that. Share it. Uh -huh. Twitter too. Okay, maybe. And meanwhile, oh, okay, multitasking, I know we women are, you know, great at it, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to disturb you. Yes. But, uh, sorry, yes, I didn't know that it was not moving so bad. Um, yeah, I don't know this. Uh, Maybe we can uh, share it as a download then with people. Um, yeah, mm, available or. Yes, but I, I have it here. I know where I, where I, where I save my presentations. Mm -hmm. So I can um, play. Okay, here it is. So it's uh, it's uploading now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, because it's it's nice to have the image. You know. Uh, do you have any questions? Maybe meanwhile, no one asked yeah. anything. Still, for sure, we have uh, some already, and. The first question that we would have, I mean, now uh, you talked about the biggest exporters, uh, the biggest importers. Uh, mm -hmm. So how is the market developing in Europe? I mean, do we see already some, you know, or yeah, how, like yeah, like uh, like I, I showed, yeah, I showed the, it's, it's the, the information that I had. It was from the United Nations Trade Center, and it was from year two thousand nineteen, I think. So it's quite uh, updated, and the third importer in the world worldwide is um germany mm -hmm. and actually i i live in germany and i see them i mean a lot uh, in asian markets even in netto which is like a huge market chain in um in in germany and actually what they do is that they they have um the maquila which is like they they buy the bamboo shoots I think that they buy them, buy them without, without, I mean, just, uh, just the, the raw material. And then they, they, um, in Germany already, they put them in, uh, how to say, it? Uh, in bazaar. Sorry, I forgot the word. <laughs> so they put them inside base glasses, a glass uh, container. They contain, they, they make the they put them in containers and fill them with they they put their brands no they brand them here so they are specifically mm -hmm. i don't know if they're produced specifically for netto or they just buy like huge quantities and then just uh, mm -hmm. um, brand them here no yes i mean so, if you have the demand and you say it's like a third spot in in the important import uh and the world is is a major place or very very important place so interesting so is there back to the question are there already plantations for edible shoots in europe no no well well um in italy uh only mosso only mosso italy have their different companies no and uh, which is like a, it's a consortium, so they have different companies, and one of their companies is specifically uh, for bamboo shoots. But they also harvest uh, bamboo for um, for um, for construction, no? so for for using the poles, the the columns per se. So normally there's a mixed uh, a mixed product, a mixed um, model over there, and yeah, the the harvesting is quite different. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't normally with bamboo shoots it's quite intensive the harvesting of uh, of, of the clumps, but with with um, with mixed uh, with mixed products or mixed objectives you only harvest a certain amount, not thirty percent, uh, around thirty percent of the. Mm -hmm of the of the shoots that emerge and the other ones are for for um for construction or for the other objectives that you have good so let's go through the presentation because we have uh some more questions on you know uh, the period of um 
you know, growing bamboo until you can harvest all the, all the, also maybe more forestry and maintenance and care related mm -hmm. topics. So let's go into that then. Yes. So I, as I said, the uh, most important uh, source of, it's a very important source of fiber for our diet, which is, uh, which is great because, because lots of our diets, especially, um, especially in Peru, for example, we have a lack of, of fibery diet in, in in our nutrition because there's um, like not that much uh, consumption of, of of vegetables, no, or fruits. That's why um, if you have like bamboo growing in your home garden, it could be a good uh, a good alternative. And as as I said, uh, it's also a current cultural heritage, especially in Asia, where where they uh, where they intensively man manage their bamboo plantations for for shoots. And these are the the numbers that I said. Export and uh, it's a it's a, a market that uh, it's about hundred million dollars worldwide. So this is also one reason of of, of of about planting and green bamboo shoots because we could also participate from this big, uh, from this big market, right? And these are the as, as I this is this is the last uh, slide that I show you. This is uh, these are the uh, countries that participate mostly in the exports and imports around the world. With Japan, the first number one exporter, no, importer of bamboo bamboo edible bamboo shoots in the world then united states or very <laughs> a very large difference but um then germany you know like we said in the in the last uh, in the last convert discussion that we had with yana and then then i wanted to show you why uh why we are the the lectures for uh for in this course why, why are we like? Why do we have the the right <laughs> to give you a course about edible shoots? No, as as uh, Yana said, I am I am yeah, I am a forester. I have like more than fifty years of experience mm -hmm. uh, working with bamboos in several parts of the value chain. And Mauricio Mauricio is uh, is an entrepreneur from Mexico. He actually makes, uh, he has an enterprise and he's specialized in making different products, different uh, products for uh, food products, no? Uh, he, he's the first, he's the first person that made a bamboo beer in Mexico and I think Latin America in total. And he's now making a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, of research no, with a university in Mexico about the potential uses of bamboo shoots, not only pickle them and not only eat them fresh, also eat them like in, 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 in chips, no? and, and also bamboo flower and all the range of products that you can imagine. So he's, uh, he's also had grain in China and in different countries, and he is also specialized in capacity building. No? He's always participated and we made this, uh, this wonderful, wonderful um, seminars on bamboo shoots, also like a lot of field work, harvesting them and also like producing them uh, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen. So we have uh, a lot of experience. This is, this is one of the Couple of pictures on of the of our seminars, mm -hmm. our day, uh, day, it's one day seminar, no? on how to 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 harvest them, how to peel them, how to to take the cyanogenic uh, compounds out of the of the of the shoots, and then uh, like transforming them in products in long time products like build them and also put them with sugar and yeah and the experiences that we had so this is our our, our flyer the one that project produced and yeah if you you want more information about this yeah you can always open uh, go into the project uh, web page and then there's a link now for, for 
for that for that uh, okay and that's it that's about my presentation now we can maybe uh, uh, answer some questions or super super let's go let's go into that so um we have quite specific <laughs> questions on board so let's go into that uh which bamboo species are best suited uh for maybe uh latin america conditions eventually european eventually africa uh to mm -hmm. produce edible shoots if you can just you know kind of point us into yeah, there's a lot of species uh that are suited for for bamboo shoots and there are around hundred species that are suited for bamboo shoots mm -hmm. um, some of them i don't know uh, there's a lot of uh, for example now i think fred is in fred hornaday which is uh, also part of freud he's now in thailand and he sh sent me um some they are doing management in some tirso calamus uh, species i've never heard about this genus because we don't have them in 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 latin america Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems, but it seems like it's a it's a mix, it's a species that is intermediate between Dendrocalamus, which is also most of the Dendrocalamus species. Mm -hmm. uh, Dendrocalamus is a genus of, of bamboo that also is very suit, suitable for most of the species are very suitable for for bamboo shoots. Um, and there's Ostachis, which is another genus that I don't that I don't know know about so yeah so for example this uh this genus that i don't know but latin america uh we use a lot bambusas bambusa mm -hmm. vulgaris it's not that good for it but i mm -hmm. still use but bambus olhami we use a lot of bambus olhami philostachis the philostachis are also is a great genus for bamboo shoots mm -hmm. we have uh, most of bamboo here in europe it's mm -hmm. great for bamboo shoots um, Philostachis, um, Philostachis aurea, we use in, in, in Latin America, and also Dendrocalamus, no? Dendrocalamus asper, we have a lot, and Dendrocalamus asper is awesome because it's big, it has a lot of content, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's very, it's delicious, no? It's very great. Very tasty. Great. So, next question. Thank you so much. Uh, how long does it take uh, until you can harvest the edible shoots from a plantation, planting to having the shoots and being able yes. to process them? Uh, around three years. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can have uh, bamboo shoots. You're going to have bamboo shoots from, from the first in the first year, but it's not recommendable to harvest them because bamboo is still growing. No, it's, it's uh, it's kind of establishing itself in the in the mm -hmm. soil so yeah we recommend that it's around the third year you can start harvesting them mm -hmm. in the case of uh, of bamboo shoots the, the management is quite uh, on the harvesting is quite intensive so yes so we better to wait a little bit until the, the rhizomes are, are established and yes, you have good amount of biomass no? in the... yes it's you know always um you have this discussion on whether it's energy whether it's food whether it's paper recently on paper we had also a little bit um you need to have you need to count with the biomass that in, that you need to produce everybody's like bamboo is growing let's do it you know it, it's gonna go fast it goes faster than trees eventually you know until you have a capacity or output or whatever but uh, you need still a certain amount. So this is this is quite a you know a calculation. So maybe we can also do the calculations we will have on energy more for bamboo. So it's very very interesting. Yes, and also like in, in bamboo shoots, you live only well Chinese uh, in China they only live like two two columns standing. And normally you see when you think about bamboo clumps, no, you think about like I don't know like. Mm -hmm. a, 10 or 50 or five or I don't know between five and ten which is also like too much for a clump but uh, but you only leave standing mm -hmm. so so that yeah so it's 
doesn't become like uh, this uh, um, this amazing uh, mm -hmm. forest, no? Like kind of foresty uh, bamboo base. It's mm -hmm. uh, I, it's, it's quite open, it's quite open. The, it's, it, it um, doesn't close the canopy. That's why I, I'm thinking that it's, it's good. It's quite uh, quite optimal, no? For some species, for some species, not for all of them, for agroforestry systems, no? To get mm -hmm. edible shoots with other with other, um, with not with not with all species of bamboo. Sure. Mm -hmm. Also, a super interesting topic. Actually, one of the following questions that we have on the list. Mm -hmm. So we also recently had a little post uh, for those of you that follow Frog Geeks or uh, the discussion around bamboo or the updates that we share within this uh, uh, bamboo mastery series and the community that we're building in, in this in this part. Um, what are the combinations, the, the plans that you would combine or recommend of, or to test maybe as well? for agroforestry systems with bamboo? Are there any particular combinations that, that you would yeah, like? Yeah, um, like um, Mozambique, Paulino, Paulino Botao is, uh, is doing bamboo with pineapple. And yeah, it's, a, it's uh, the main, I've seen also bamboo and banana, but, uh, they uh, both of them need a lot of water, so so it would be in a place that there's not that much water. No, it's would com they will compete for it. Normally, you have to mix uh, bamboo species, uh, bamboos with a species that are not the same family. Uh, they have to they have to be like different, not as plus grass or um, or I don't know like. Um, and then, uh, uh, pineapple is uh, it's a bromelia, which is a um, completely different species from um, from a grass, no? So mm -hmm. take different nutrients from the soil. I would say mm -hmm. also if with endrocalamus, maybe a coffee would also be suitable mm -hmm. because, because they have to be pruned, no? Coffee has to be pruned. They don't grow that but um, how to say, don't cover that much space. It's just like a bush, no? Um, something, some plants that won't give uh, bamboo so much shadow because they need a lot of, of light. Mm -hmm. And also like if they spread, then they should be le legumes because legumes are great for the soil, no? Mm -hmm. They nitrogen to the soil also. Yeah, I mean, just to add, we heard also about ginger, about coffee, you mentioned it. Um, pepper was also mentioned. Um, yeah, maybe some, some other um, combinations are out there. And we encourage you to also share if you experiment with us, you know, what would you kind of get out of that. And let's go now uh, into more of the technical questions, uh, as, as indicated before. So uh, what are the... Uh, recommended soil preparation techniques that you would kind of suggest for anybody growing or having a plantation or thinking about it, whatever. Um, yeah, to prepare optimal growing environment for bamboo. Bamboo, uh, bamboo don't need. There are some species uh, that need require better grain soils. No, like really, uh, don't have that much. Uh, a because a retains a lot of water and, and also retains um, uh, nutrients. But bamboos just need organic matter. I mean compost and mm -hmm. um, and also there are some very interesting uh, uh, research investigations that show that bamboos um, actually have make their own microorganism environments. Oh. Mm -hmm. they start uh, throwing leaves into the soil and these leaves uh, start creating this uh, micro microorganism environment. And when you add a lot of fertilizer, the like chemical fertilizer, you just start killing this, uh, this micro environment. So yes, so um, this is something also that I learned this year <laughs> and I am, I am uh, I'm reading a lot about this. But I would say 
if you have a very poor soil, um, reaching it with compost for sure, because it's, uh, it's what it does is uh, that it starts creating um, micro a biota, a micro habitat for, for organisms. And, and also I've, uh, there are a lot of, um, for example, uh, biochar or biochar mixed with uh, compost tea, you know, that also helps uh, help any plant to grow amazing, amazingly. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, normally doesn't it's not very bubbles are not are not that uh, uh, like fertilizer mm, intensive, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would I hear out manure maybe organic? Or yeah, man organic? manure compost, compost, humus, no. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with manure, we have to be careful because, for example, a pig manure it needs to be decomposed first because it has a lot of methane, uh, mm -hmm. releases a lot of methane. So it has to be uh, carefully, it has to be decomposed. So it's better to be composted first. Good. But Good of course, you have to, I mean, it's also like a, if you have the possibility and you have a small amount of bamboo plants, then you can do it. But, but of course, if you everything depends also in the in the economic the economic intensity. <laughs> no, um, so yeah, I would I would would say I would recommend that com that all of these manures should be first composted. No. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So uh, as we are progressing with time, let's, you know, uh, kind of cover the points that we have open in a, as short uh, as possible time. So uh, regarding planting and uh, propagation of uh, bamboo, what is uh, best recommended for, from you? Is it seeds, rhizomes or cutting uh, to propagate bamboo? What is the best? Uh... Um, yeah, seeds complicated with seeds. Uh, it's very difficult to find them. Uh, when you find them in Asia, maybe it's, it's easier because you have already like people. But also like you have, you need to have like a very trustable source of, of, of seeds. Seeds of bamboo seeds have a very short lifespan, mm -hmm. very short lifespan. And, um, and most of the time, only from um, only from an amount that you have, only five percent have viability. You have a very low viability and very low lifespan. So it's uh, be a very frustrating <laughs> endeavor. <laughs> but uh, what people use normally are cuttings or um, uh, cuttings from from branches or from culms. Mm -hmm. From certain species are. Um, also rhizomes, no? Mm -hmm. The good thing about <coughs> sorry, like the good thing about about um, seeds is that yeah, some species um, they flower and they they die, no? And they have a lifespan, so to say. So mm -hmm. if you are taking out cuttings, normally they are clones. So the clones the same age as the plants where you took. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you take out a cutting from a plant that has a hundred years and their life, um, their life range is 130, you could have the possibility of of um, a dead plant, you no, know, in one point or the other. And so, it's good to know the ecology of the bamboo that you are that you are planting for sure. Mm -hmm. To know if the, if it dies or not when it flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, good. So uh, cuttings, recommended cuttings. That's what uh, your you, you yeah, are. Saying. Yes. yes. Uh, always check out. This is the, my uh, my recommendation as a forest engineer. <laughs> uh, always check out what is available near you. Mm -hmm. No, don't uh, get too complicated with uh, with with things. Just check out what's available around and use those so for sure. Good. Is there any recommended process, just maybe in few steps, uh, for how to establish, uh, how to ensure a successful establishment or, and growth of this bamboo? We have the cutting. What would you recommend? Like, yeah, step? you get, you have to get uh, 
remember a quality material. I mean, uh, you, you have to check what is around, but always make sure that you are uh, getting plants from a good source, from a good nursery, or or uh, knowing where is the mother plants, where you are taking the the cuttings from. Um, then, like of course, if you are taking the cuttings, you have to build a nursery and get good personnel or 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 uh, people that already have worked in nurseries before. It's not difficult to work. Not very difficult to work with cuttings from bamboos. If you have worked with other plants, just yeah, to get uh, some training and that's it. But um, then, of course, taking care of the plants in the nursery is very important to water them, put them in good uh, in good um, sub substrate, or like good soil, no, with also with compost or humus, and then. And then, of course, uh, waiting until the plant is around for months and, and establishing in the soil. Okay, so four months and then, uh, you know, replant into... Around into four months and then replanting. I'm just making, I'm just taking general general, uh, general mm -hmm. recommendations. I have mm -hmm. to check out also the plant or if it's from cuttings or it's from some other sources. But around four months is the time in the nursery. Okay. So you mentioned a very important element, water, you know, always important. I mean, how do you ensure that you really have the right amount of water for your bamboo? Sometimes, you know, they say uh, starting uh, with bamboo, maybe more, uh, the, the further you go, you know, it has its own water management. So what can you tell us about that? Mm -hmm. um, yes, it depends if it's uh, summer and winter also. But that's why you have you need to have good personnel. If you are doing it yourself, the the, um, the nursery, you are only taking it by yourself. Then uh, it's important to have some experience also with, with plants. Um, I have my own method of knowing if the if the plants need water, and I normally use my finger for it. Uh, but yeah, I mean like. Every person that has experience watering or taking care of plants would know their own. We have their own uh, their own ways to know if the plant needs or not doesn't need, don't need water. No. Normally, surf. You have to check if the first centimeter, but in the in the bottom centimeter, if it's wet. It doesn't need water. If it's dry, then you have to water it. Mm -hmm. Depends so, in the uh, yeah in the capacity and it's uh, if it's or then yeah like if it's summer and it's very hot then uh, every sometimes every day but, uh, it depends yeah it depends in the weather how is it it's a lot of of, so, uh, of sun outside but normally nurseries are covered now mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. depends in the humidity of the place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and what about uh, uh, weed and uh, pest control? What are the like most common pests and diseases that affect bamboo, and how can we prevent them? Possibly, you know, we are at frog geeks, uh, the frog geeks talk in a environmental yes. friendly way. Mm -hmm. uh, with bamboo, if you have very uh, strong plants, no, if there, if uh, normally, in for example, in the nursery, you you can have with uh, with crickets, oh, they eat the, the. So it's better to be closed if you are living in conditions like in the jungle or some places where you have a lot of insects. Should be closed or with net, no? so so uh, insects won't get inside. Then in the um, that's only in the first stages, and then when they are already established in the soil. Uh, uh, just I mean a little bit of of, of weed control, but maybe establishing some called some uh, cultivar in the middle in the first years, so can help you control pests. But I would not uh, recommend uh, um, like glyphosate or like this kind of of uh, herbicides because bamboo is a herb. Bamboo is a grass, so you would kill it. Very, very possible that 
you can kill your plants using that thing, yeah. And and also it's uh, it's it's economical, it's economically. Um, not, I mean, it's it could be expensive and also environmentally not friendly, no. But mainly because you can also like, kill your plants using it. So, yeah. so I would say maybe covering around. They should be uh, the the um, wheat clean, or cleaning the plants from weeds and everything. To be only uh, do do it around the uh, the in around the area where they grow. Then the other plants that are around, uh, if it's very if they're really very very wild uh, grasses, then try to keep them low low. Not I mean they, they should get some sun. The bamboo needs to have. Uh, Lot of, of light, no? So it will get vegetation a little bit low. But I mean, I don't think that that it's it's that important. To keep keep absolutely clean, no? So hundred percent weed free because it also covers the soil and it uh, it uh, it protects the soil, no? I mean, in the mean in the meantime. Okay, so last question because we are we are uh, slightly over time. So let's let's take the last question on, and that would be basically in terms of uh, harvesting. Today we had a lot about you know edible uh, shoots, you know the market potential, the benefits of that. You know for those of you that are kind of watching the re replay or just joining right now, um, and in the last part we go really into the technical, into the harvest maintenance care, and um, Last question is how do how uh, would you recommend to harvest bamboo for optimal optimal yield uh, and quality, and are there any specific methods, any specific cutting methods uh, that would encourage uh, the regrowth of bamboo? Um, well, bamboo will, will, will regrow no? if they, it has space and light, but uh, normally it has to be. Have to be careful about uh, cutting it at the the um, the net level of the of the of the node, no, to avoid uh, to avoid um, broadening because because it it starts like forming if you if you cut the middle of the column or the inner node then you have a space where where water accumulates and then you can rot the the um, this this piece of of column that is still left, and also it can rotten the rhizome. And if you rotten one rhizome, uh, you can rotten another rhizome because all of this is connected. No? All of the of the the soil system is connected. So yes, so the cutting has to be like really well done done at the first uh, node, the first and the uh, the level of the first node and yes that's uh, mainly the important thing to do uh, in for guava for example it was just this is just like an, an not an anecdote but this is like some traditional ways of doing it in Colombia they ha they ha they think that or they have the belief that if you cut them um, in one in a new moon, 12 o'clock night in new moon when there's complete darkness uh, then the amount of water in the column uh, this is for construction no? this is for construction purposes for edible shoots and then the amount of, of water in the column would be less so that in, in that way mm, you can I mean you, you don't have that amount of uh, you can dry them Faster and they won't rot that fast, or or, or be attacked by, by by insects that fast. However, mm, yeah, this is a, this is like a traditional thing. But cutting at night with no light is really dangerous, especially because bamboos could be really heavy, you know. 
but in case of uh, of um, of edible shoots, you have to also dig a little bit the soil and cut them underneath the soil. Underneath the soil, there's still there's still uh, some some nodes, and you have to try to reach the the calm neck, you know, to get to to get as much as possible from the edible shoot. So this is for edible shoots. And the other one that I said in the, in the level of the first shoot out, and, um, outside the soil, this is for construction. This is the way to, to uh, guarantee a good maintenance of, of, your, of your clump. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, depending in the use that you want, the harvest, uh, the harvest intensity, you know, how many uh, how many columns or shoots you have to leave, or etc. That's, but that's uh, that's another subject. <laughs> that's another topic. Either, either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there will be a lot more because, as mentioned before, we're we're starting this joint project with some other people involved in bamboo as well, talking or kind of aiming for the bamboo mastery. You know, very interesting product. A lot of hype around that. The big boom. Interesting applications, but it's also not a solution for everything. And we still need to kind of uh, keep common sense and wise planning uh, at the like uh, right hand when you start the project. So we will definitely talk more about this. Thank you so much, Natalia, for sharing your insights. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I think that, um, yeah, it's totally right. Bamboo is a, is a great plant, but it's not, um, I mean, it's not the solution for everything. And, and it could be a great tool. It depends. And as Every plant or every species in the world it has its places to be to be uh, planted and its uses and its yeah exactly its environment so to say no so yeah thank you very much Jana for the invitation I was had a great time and thank you very much everyone for for. Thank for watching, yeah, for watching. Uh, once again for those of you that are you have natalia's uh, contact details over here you can find her on frog geeks if not on other channels as well uh, there will be this um, bamboo master class uh, on edible shoots starting this friday so if you are up for this you want to get pro or go pro in this field i highly recommend that to join us let us know drop me a message or wherever you you kind of come across this and yeah see you on the next one we're gonna definitely talk more in our bamboo time and you know in the bamboo mastery our bamboo time <laughs> bye thank you have a great rest bye -bye. of the day bye, bye see you in the next one you too bye bye